It takes courage, grit, and dedication to be a leader and entrepreneur. And it's even more challenging when you're a woman. For far too long, women have been underrepresented in healthcare industry leadership positions and entrepreneurship. But because of leaders like our next guest, that unfortunate reality is now shifting. In this episode, we are joined by the inspiring and fearless Emma Sale. She is a CEO and founder of the global female empowerment brand, Killing Kittens. She is also the co-founder of the Sister App, which is specifically designed to help empower women in their professional pursuits, which is producing positive mental health contributions for its users along the way. Find out how Emma has been trailblazing female empowerment for over 15 years and why she is more committed than ever to support female leaders to forge their path and to elevate the conversation around this important and needed global movement. Welcome to Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli, where we highlight and speak with the innovators, the game changers, and the pioneers who are deeply passionate and relentless in solving the problems our world is facing today. This is your opportunity to connect with and learn from these leaders and to support them on their mission. Perhaps they will soon be hearing your story as well. This is Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. I look forward to having you on this journey with us. Emma, it is so great to have you on our podcast today, all the way from one of my favorite places, the United Kingdom. Great to be on it. Thanks for having me. Well, Emma, when I first learned about the global female empowerment movement that you have created for now over the past 15 years, I knew I needed to have you on our podcast. But before we dive into this work and the movement that you've created around the world, a bit of housekeeping. While listening to any of our episodes, please make sure to join our free online community at passionatepioneers.com in order to share feedback and ideas and interact with the global ecosystem. If you're listening to this episode via our online community, thank you for being with us. And lastly, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast so you will automatically receive episode updates in your podcast player. Simply search Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli and Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. All right, Emma, it's almost time to learn how you've built your international network with female empowerment at its core and how our female community members can get involved in the movement. But first, let's go ahead and break the ice a bit. Let's get to know you personally. I'm going to grab one of three questions here. Let's see what we come up with. Okay. Now, I know how busy you are, Emma. I've been learning and studying and working with your colleagues. You are a very, very busy entrepreneur building several companies underneath your media conglomerate. What is one thing that you love to do outside of your work? We live on the river and just dive into the river, swim in the river. No matter how much stress or whatever's going on in my life, I will just walk into that river (laughs) and swim in it. People think I'm mad. Now, is it cold? I know it's the United Kingdom. It's not like, you know, down in Spain or anything. Is this a cold river? What are we looking at temperature-wise? It's the Thames. It's the River Thames. So it is pretty chilly. And I do have a wetsuit, so depending on what time of year. But I just find it just completely clears the brain cobwebs. and, And obviously the whole swimming, you know, being immersed in cold water. And the breathing is very good for your immune system and just mental well-being, really. So, yeah, that's my thing. It really is. Now, I know also it sounds like you're a beach person as well or ocean. So is it ocean, river, or is it always river that you love? No, I'm a water baby. So just put me in water. Like my husband knows if I'm being a disgusting human being, (laughs) which we can all be at times. And all stress, he'll just be like, go for a swim. (laughs) Just go immerse yourself in water and then I'll come back a nice human being. I love it. Well, I'm a big fan of water as well. I have not dipped into the River Thames well over there, but maybe next time I will have to do that as well. So thank you for sharing that, Emma. Great to hear on the personal side some of the things that you love to do outside of your incredible work with the movement that you have created. So Emma, we're going to talk about that movement. It's been a while for you. It's not like you just started this yesterday. You've been at it now since 2005 building this international media conglomerate that is really working on female empowerment. And this is something here with our podcast that we get incredibly excited about continuing to lift that female voice to create meaning and real and lasting change and to have that voice at the seat of the table of where major decisions are being made, even specifically here within our healthcare industry. So with that setting the stage a bit, Emma, take us back a bit again, decade and a half, getting after it with Killing Kittens. What was the aha moment? 
Where did this begin? Why were you positioned for this? Why were you the one that said, you know what, I'm going to take this bull by the horns and really lead this movement? Take us back to those moments of when this began. I think where it began was from a tiny, tiny age of growing up. And I always say there was this anger and fire in my belly because I grew up in the Middle East. My dad was a diplomat and in the army. And he was also a very controlling, narcissistic, quite misogynist a human being who didn't treat mom very well. They had a very coercive, controlled relationship. They're not together anymore. And I grew up with my home life in the Middle East, seeing the way women were treated, also seeing at home the way mom was treated. And this being angry at so much potential I could see in her and what an amazing human being she was. And at the same time, I was at an all-girls boarding school in England for 10 years where you get taught you can be whatever you want to be as a girl and you can go out and you can rule the world. And so I grew up with very mixed messages, term time, holiday time, and sort of came out and kind of vowing not to allow men to be like that to me. And I'm coming into a world where I thought I could be come out there and be whoever I wanted to be. And so I went into financial PR working in the city and had a couple of harassment issues with a boss. And this was sort of 22 years ago and made a few complaints. And at the time, you know, I was a little insecure 21 year old and got told I'd be a troublemaker if I took it further. And it sort of, it just had this fire going on that this wasn't right. And I thought we could come out and do what we wanted, but there was a very mixed messaging. And at the same time, also looking around me in the way, you know, as a single female and all my single female friends were sort of judged if you had a one night stand, if you even, you know, really spoke about your sexuality or dared to want to explore it or say you were bi or anything like that, whereas men could do whatever they wanted and they could sleep with whoever they wanted and as many women as they wanted. And they were high fived and patted on the back and they were considered legends. So this was going on and it was the same time that Sex and the City, the tele TV show came out. And over here, we've got a big brand called Ann Summers, which hit the high streets. It was the first stores in the high street that had sex toys. And it was around 2004 to beginning in 2005. And they were talking about this female sexual revolution going on. And I was reading about it and thinking, yeah, that's great, but it's not happening. There's still not the change. There's still a very double standards when it comes to a female sex. And at the same time, I was out and about with a group in London who were very well known and some of the women in it were just owned their sexuality and they were really strong. And we were all at a wedding in Ibiza and hadn't slept for about three days. And the TV presenter who couldn't make the wedding phoned in and said to the groom, are you guys just all sat around killing kittens at the moment? And we had this conversation that, well, that's what's that? That's slang for every time you masturbate, God kills a kitten. So if you're killing kittens and you're all just sat around playing with yourselves. And I just went, that's it. That's the name. I wanted to do something that was all about sort of female sexual empowerment and women being able to make choices and being in control of their sexuality and being able to chat about it in a community that without judgment, without any male control over them and be free to be whoever they wanted. And that's how Killing Kittens began. And it always had community at its core and it being a very safe space and from day one there was always an online community there and online forums but obviously back in 2005 it's sort of Facebook didn't really I think it was kind of just coming out and digital media was kind of the digital virtual world was kind of coming out it's sort of the virtual side just built up and built up but now actually in the last four years we're considered a tech business because most of our revenue comes from our online world, which is sort of a dating site meets the social network. And we've just launched new tech in a brand new platform last week. And our app version is going live on iOS and Android. So what we've created is a big social network platform that we want to basically rival the big ones out there as an adult safe for work platform. So you have your Instagram for your pics and your Facebook for your family, LinkedIn for business, but there isn't a social network platform for your adult life. You go from Facebook to anything to do with sex just gets thrown in kind of the porn category. So from sex ed to and everything, all the workshops, community, being able to chat, using it like a dating site. So that's where Killing Kittens is at the moment. Well, that's exciting. And again, as I mentioned in framing this up at the front end of this recording with you, Emma, you really have created a media company, right? You have created a platform for all of these different 
pieces of technology and applications to build from it. And you have taken over 15 years. This stuff does not happen overnight. I get it from one entrepreneur or another. This stuff does not happen overnight. And you have been at it year after year after year, building the movement and now watching these pieces of technology and innovation coming from that incredible foundation that you built. But I still want to stay back in that kind of era of 2005, the internet, right? Here we are. You mentioned it. Facebook wasn't even on yet. We had this one thing called MySpace. But what I'm curious about, and I still want to, again, dive in there and understand, you know, one thing is, you know, as well, Emma, for entrepreneurs, we need to not just go and create a product and then go find somebody to buy it. We want to go and help solve for a problem in the marketplace. And if the internet wasn't really there yet in 2005, there you were with some of your friends at a wedding, you had the aha moment. How did you know that not only in the UK, but maybe even internationally, with the lack of social networking, that this was a problem, that this was a need for female empowerment. How did you go about finding that out? To start with, I'm an old school hustler. I'm a networker. I'm a face-to-face person. I am a people person. I will use tech and the digital world to help as a method, but it's not who I am as a person. And you've always been surrounded. I think the old girls boarding school thing. I've always been the one wanting to help the girls around me and seeing the best in them and thinking there's so much potential in you and you're letting a man put you down and control your life or you're letting other girls get to you. To start with, it was very much an event. So we would do monthly parties, had every, any men that came along had to be accompanied by a girl and there any single girls that many single girls that they want could come along and there were mass parties and there were rooms where people can explore their sexuality. So sex does go on very much the rules in place with KK and it's always been from day one is that men can't approach women they don't know it's very much the girls doing the first moves so to start with it was these offline events and I saw it as a safe space for girls to get together just to talk about their sex lives talk about what they want what they wanted to try what you know the whole bisexual space you know women are naturally bi-curious they really are their sexual spectrum one to seven a Kinsey scale and women are very much three, four, five. And I used to say this 15 years ago and girls would be like, no, we're not. We're completely straight. And after an hour and a few drinks later, they'd be like, oh, I've always thought I wondered what it would be like to kiss another girl. And so it's there, it's in our makeup. So to me, we're sort of providing a safe space offline and a place for women to be able to get together and with like-minded other women and have open conversations that maybe they felt they couldn't have with a close girlfriend. And that's how it started. And in that, Emma, because I'm curious about this, was it one type of female persona? I'm maybe imagining it's not. Did you see a full spectrum? Did you see a wide age range? Did you see a wide professional type of female persona? What was that persona? Was it quite vast? Was it wide? Was it specific? What did that persona look like who wanted to engage in the first movement of killing kittens? It was vast. The industry, a lot of people, you know, there was an assumption because I was white, blonde, private school girl, um, that that's what the demographic was. And actually from day one, it's been, I always say it's across all industries and all cultures. It's just more of a mindset, that kind of hedonistic mindset of the go-getters who want to experience the world and go out and try new things. And it was that. But then what we have seen, and we were looking at it, we were talking about it this morning, actually, is there are kind of two main categories of women age-wise. And we get the whole spectrum. So from 20 through to in their 60s, we do, we have members across the entire board, but where you have the most are these two groups of sort of 27 to 32 and then around 39, 40 through to late 40s. And I call it the baby black hole is the middle bit. So it's sort of, you get the women before they're, late 20s they're coming their own sexual confidence and that they want to go and experiment and explore and they're not necessarily married yet and they don't have kids so they have this freedom and then what you've got is the women coming who have then you know mid 30s late 30s go into the black hole the baby hole of your life's completely consumed and you might get married you might have little babies running around and then you come out it's like i for example would be the come out you know i've had three kids in the last six years I'm now, you know, 42 and only in the last year, I've just gone, right, I'm getting me back. And I could not care. If you said to me, go and run down the street naked, I'd be like, sod it, why not? Because you come into that kind of into the 40s of just 
this is who I am. So we have these two personas basically of women that would be, I would consider like the main bulk of our female members would fall into those two categories. That's fascinating. And so now I really want to focus and pivot towards some of the current state and what you're working on, especially for a lot of our female leaders here, building wonderful businesses, leading movements of their own within healthcare innovation, whether it be with established organizations or startup ventures or otherwise. And that is your sister app launched about over a year ago. And it states that you guys are on a mission to reimagine the world of business networking by giving all women access to a community of inspiring and supportive peers. Now, Emma, let me set the stage before you dive in here and what is happening with the sister platform within your larger media company. You know it as well as I do. Female entrepreneurs, female founders are incredibly underrepresented at the table, whether it be within venture capital investment, founding companies, and creating an opportunity for their technology, for their innovation, for their businesses to really have a presence in moving forward and and changing the dynamics of business, whoever they may serve as clients. And so with that, Emma, let's start again with that problem, talking about that, framing it up, seeing those issues at hand in the marketplace. Is that some of the impetus behind Sister to lift up these female executives, these business leaders, these entrepreneurs to give them that opportunity to be represented? There's an element of that massively. And then there's also, I launched a a group called the Sisterhood, again, about 15 years ago. And it's a big group of girls and we do lots of crazy different adventure races around the world and raise loads of money. I think we've raised nearly about a million pounds for various kind of women and children charities. And But the big part of the Sisterhood, and it's women from all walks of life and different ages, different industries, there's a big kind of chat group involved. And I call it a bit like the Masons. Do you get the Freemasons in the States? I don't know. The, the, um, yeah, we do. Basically on speed kind of thing. If you want something done and you will need a lawyer or you need this, it goes in the group and instantly one of the other girls are like, here's who yeah, Use this email. Oh, speak to her. Tell them you know me. And it hasn't been a business. It's just my passion, the sports side of thing. It's that collaboration and helping each other out and women supporting women. So you had that on, offline. And then my co-founder, Hadley, on Sister, who's a real tech ninja and with different tech you know, platforms and social media networks. And he had a sort of mentoring platform that I've built. And we were chatting about it and just thought actually the combination of it. And there's a lot of women's networking groups out there. There's an online and offline, but most of them are in specific industries. And a lot of them are for specific levels that you're at. That we looked at it. And I think it's, again, it's another thing that is a very patriarchal world, which is quite, it's not flexible and everything's quite black and white. And it's sort of when women don't work like that, women are a thousand shades of gray and we flow and we don't in the same way mentor and mentee it's sort of everyone I could be a mentor but actually I could be a mentee as well because there's a lot I don't know and a girl in their mid-20s who might be a social media expert could be my mentor for that side of things so the way women operate is not as black and white as the male world that the business has kind of been operating in and To us with Sister, it was creating something that all women from sort of 18 plus are part of. Whether you've got a job, whether you're trying to get a job, whether you want to pivot careers, whether you've come through, whether you're a serial entrepreneur, a big city woman, or you're a TV presenter, or you're a model. It's all professional women across all walks of life. Just being able to help each other out and collaborate and partnerships. And personally, I think the world has moved into more of a collaborative world. It's not so much you do something on your own and you're 100%. It's more, you know, a group of people founding something. That cognitive diversity within teams is crucial rather than for stale pale males that it has been on board level. It's so, so to sister, there is a big element of helping those founders and giving them the tools and giving them access to other sisters who have been there, done it, or sisters who might work in, but it'd be, you know, in funds. And it's from workshops, you know, doing virtual workshops, from everything from HR issues through to negotiating your worth and confidence. And because one thing we've found, which is the biggest problem in females in the workplace, is confidence. It's all very well giving them the skills to write the perfect pitch deck or the perfect business plan. But if they're not confident, then how are they going to sell it? 
You took exactly where I was going to go with the next question. You know, our podcast here at Passionate Pioneers, Emma, we are incredibly fired up and dedicated and relentless around the notion of mental health and mental well-being. And for our community, just a quick aside, you can find more out at the sisterapp.com and that's S-I-S-T-R-A-P-P.com. But with that, Emma, because you touched on it, right? Giving each other confidence within this community and these different viewpoints on life, no matter where they come from. Like you said, it could be a 20 year old social media marketer, or it could be a model and she's in her, you know, forties. It's a whole diverse yeah. group. And I think that's amazing. And I think that that's powerful in and of itself. But with that, Emma, let's focus there for a moment. Have you seen with the sister app, that opportunity for this community to rely on each other for that mental well-being aspect that it is going to be okay. Or I had that same exact problem and I got over it this way, or just being a safe space for someone just to be able to have an opportunity for another individual or another sister in this environment, just to listen. What does that look yeah. like for the mental well-being yeah. inside this environment? It, you know, it's been huge. And actually during lockdown in the last four months, we were hosting monthly events. We had panel debates and I'd host them and they were on different themes with a panel of five women who had all, you know, achieved masses in the, whatever that industry is. And they were very raw and vulnerable. There was nothing discussed about figures at all. It was more the failures and what you've learned and what that have been the challenges. And it's that bit. People want to hear that actually it's accessible. You know, it's accessible to go and pursue your dreams and launch a business. It's very hard to get that when you see someone who is already a millionaire and they're the CEO of this business. You look at that and you go, oh my gosh, they're amazing. But it's very hard actually to access what their story is getting to that point. And it's that story that is the inspiration. And it's that story that allows women, to, girls to have dreams and boys that actually anything's possible because these people have faced all these challenges and maybe were broke or they were homeless or they were, you know, the, to get to where they are. They didn't just get there and fall out the sky with millions in their pockets. That's the easy bit that you can see on LinkedIn. So one big part of, of Sister and what we've done from week one is I've been hosting like an Instagram live chat on a Tuesday and Thursday evening with women from all walks of life and different countries with different stories who are all very successful in their own right, whether that's an Olympic athlete we've had to a top TV presenter over here and then a top city businesswoman and, you know, successful in their own right. But the chats have been very much that the rawness, the vulnerability and what they do on a daily basis to keep them sane, what are their mental health tips and tricks and habits. So that is a huge part of Sister. And I think that's come from maybe my own battles and challenges and getting older <laughs> and more aware and what do I want in life from the support of women around me? Because it's not just the one starting out. I think the further up you go, it's a lonely place. And there's less and less women who understand your issues and the problems surrounding you. So it's sort of when you're in your 20s, you're all in the same boat a bit. And then half your friends go off and they want to be a stay at home mom and have babies, which is totally fine. And that's the whole beauty of feminism. That you can make your choices. But then that half the girlfriends you have, you can relate to in your situation. And then you go and launch your own business. And again, that narrows down the girlfriends around you who can relate to launching your own business and the trials of that. Then you have babies whilst running your own business. And again, a lot of women would drop out and not carry on business. So there's very few people who then come out the other side who are running businesses while dealing with small children. So that's you know, another part. It's sort of sister to us is, is that support for everyone, no matter even if you are a multimillionaire female, high-flying, city exact. You still need support. Or as um, you mentioned, that woman that may be experiencing homelessness, right? And so you have that vast viewpoint and that vast experience and spectrum within Sister. I think it's absolutely brilliant, Emma. And again, for our community, you can find it at sisterapp.com, S-I-S-T-R-A-P-P.com. We'll also have it over at passionatepioneers.com, our free global online community. We'll have all the links uh, over there supporting what Emma shared here today. So Emma, you gave us a couple sneak peeks into what else is coming within the Killing Kittens family and, and the media company that you have built. Let's talk a little future state. Can you share with us what's on the horizon? What else are you building? What other things are you seeing that are needs in the marketplace? What does future look like for the Killing Kittens movement? So the big part, the platform that went live last week is a, is a social network platform. So 
to us, that's the big push in that creating the, the first adult safe for work social media platform that people will use for their adult life and to be able to chat and have the conversations in the same way you do with Facebook and you can post stuff and interesting articles. But most people hold back posting anything adult because they might have their nephews and their nieces or sons and daughters on that. And it's still, you know, Facebook's very family and kids and LinkedIn is very business focused. So to us is creating this platform and pushing it out and the chat app we've built and is launching next week because Apple this week have okayed it is very much so all the chats on there so you feel like a whatsapp so there's individual chats or you can join groups again that's a big part of what we're pushing out attached to the platform but also you can just have it as an app and use it for a group chat and individual chat that with and then the education hub we've built on it as well so everything all the online virtual workshops everything to do with sort of sex ed is going on there and we're building up partnerships on that level because we want to normalize the conversations around sex as far as i'm concerned you should be able to sit there and have a conversation about what diet you've read about and are trying and or oh i read about this new workout routine oh i've read about this new position i could try in the bedroom it should be the same normalization of the conversations we have in everyday life because at the end of the day our sexuality drives us it's the core in us it drives us more than religion more politics everything it drives everyone so why can people not have conversations about sex without it being embarrassed or awkward? So a big part of what we want to do is normalize those conversations and give it, you know, the platform to do that. And then we've got the brand advertising platform we've built, which we've got brand, brands on at the moment. We're putting more and more on there, which we call the Adult Safe for Work brands, who are brands that they're considered adult by all the other social networks. From, you know, Agent Provocateur, lingerie brands to Lalo sex toy brands, alcohol these brands that can't use digital marketing methods the same way other ones can, they can't pay for ads on Facebook or Instagram. So they're just stuck. How and how not getting that? So we've built this brand platform so that all these brands can go on there and push out across the social network that we've built. So that's sort of the big push at the moment from that side of thing. And then the chat app that we built, KK, it's just being built out at the moment so we can use it for sister as well. So it's kind of like being white labeling it. It's the same chat app. It just looks completely different. So that we're going to spin that out for sister as well. So you can join different chat groups to get that support on sisters. That's the two big things going on at the moment. Excellent. <laughs> and yeah, not much. It sounds like you're quite bored over there in the UK. So in a moment, we'll ask where we can find all of those uh, resources and assets online in just a moment. But I do want to plus one what you just said, Emma. I think you're spot on, right? And I know that this episode is going to stretch our audience. I know it's going to be good for them because I'm right there with you. I think when you think about health, we have to think about it holistically, right? And this is one thing that I say personally is if you and I were having a coffee and we're getting caught up and you talk about the amazing workout you just had in the gym this morning, why can't I talk about the therapy session I had with our marriage counselor last night and what it did for moving our marriage forward. And then to your point, why can't sexual health be discussed as well? Because we need to start thinking about holistic health for the person, financial yeah. health, sexual health, mental health, physical health, spiritual health. I think all of that needs to be focused on. And then more importantly, there are still buckets in there that need to be demystified. So Emma, thank you for taking the bull by the horns and creating this movement for many around the world to really start demystifying this, celebrating it, and understanding it's one facet of our holistic health. So again, thank you for that, Emma. I do appreciate it. Let's go ahead and flip the script a bit, though. Here we go. We would love to have our community help you. That's one thing that I love about our podcast and the global community that has rallied around it is the opportunity for our community to help our guests and our leaders just like you. So is there one problem, need, or question that you have that our community can contemplate or help you with? Do you know what? It's written about all over the place. This lack of funding when it comes to female founders and also just female products and businesses. And you look at anything to do with male sexual dysfunction and everything. They can advertise everywhere. They've got billions of funding. We're going to be going into a Series A raise for Killing Kittens about September, October. And we're literally this month launching our seed raise financial raise for sister. I just want some investors and female investors as well and male investors just to open their minds and realize that it's a billion dollar industry and be the first to do it. Be the trailblazing investors that took the punt and 
to disrupt the industry when it comes to female sexuality and just women in general. Because something like there was a study out last week that businesses with more women on the board and founders and directors, their profit, they're 10 times more profit margin. So why aren't people investing in it? Is what I want to know. If anyone out there wants to get involved, then actually both businesses are about to start funding rounds. So more than happy to speak to people. Well, to our venture community, because I know there are a lot that tune in here around the world, whether it be angel investors, venture capitalists, private equity groups, or otherwise, she's spot on. Go and look at the statistic. The numbers don't lie. When you have a founding female or females at the board level or females in executive leaderships of power, the numbers don't lie. The returns are definitely magnitudes greater than without. And the opportunity to invest in it is right now. And her track record and the Killing Kittens movement is there. It's not like this started last year. You have been at it for over 15 years We can be the unicorn and we know we've got plans to do it. 100%. So to our investor community, members around the world, head over to passionatepioneers.com, free global online community. There will be an article posted for Emma and the Killing Kittens movement and around this episode as well. But with that also... Emma, where can our community get a hold of you directly? Social media links, websites, or otherwise? I mean, Instagram, I'm just msale333, so E-M and then S-A-Y-L-E 333. And all off my Instagram, all the different business ones are off there. With KK, the main site that has everything on is wearekk.com. So we and then A-R-E as our kk.com. So to be honest, off those two things, I'm easy to find on LinkedIn as Emma Sale and Twitter as well. Absolutely. And we'll include all of those in the episode notes to get a hold of Emma and her team. So thank you for all of that, Emma. We're going to start shutting it down here. You've given us a lot of time today. As I know, you're quite bored over there in the United Kingdom, obviously. (laughs) So we're going to close it out here with one of my favorite parts, and it's our fill in the blank. I'm a passionate pioneer because? Because I want to change the world. Well, I believe you're not wanting to change the world. You are and you have been. Absolutely. (laughs) It is amazing. The movement you've created, the time is now. We need to continue to lift the female empowerment movement up. And that includes us male supporters and allies along the way. So everybody listening in, get involved with Emma and the movement that her and her team have created. It is an incredible story. So thank you, Emma, for being with us today, for taking a moment out of your busy schedule to share your story, to share your truth, and to own it and to own it 100%. I appreciate everything you shared with us today, and we look forward to being alongside the journey that you have and will continue to create. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for joining us today on Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. We'd love to hear your feedback about the podcast so we can continue to improve this community and to further support the pioneers being featured. Lastly, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast and invite your friends and colleagues to join us. This is Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. I look forward to having you back with us during our next episode.